for financial intervention. Should I extend that? Well, I, I didn't get the question. Can, can you repeat it? Yes. Uh, would I support it? What? Would you support complete withdrawal of American troops from Iraq? If one of the conditions was complete withdrawal of political, social, and financial assistance. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. This is this is the only thing that I would support. I wouldn't support a U.S. withdrawal that keeps intervention in Iraq, interfering in Iraq's uh, political and economic uh, details, uh, you know, or uh, domestic issues. Let me give you just like an example, just to show you what the, what do I mean, and I think what do the majority of Iraqis mean by ending intervention. The two parties in DC, they have, they have like a set, different way to market their uh, policy on Iraq, but not very much different uh, policy actually. Because while one of the parties want to keep the troops there for 100 years, we were told, right? The other party's candidates are planning to leave troops in Iraq indefinitely as well. Uh, the two uh, Democratic candidates have been speaking repeatedly about three exceptions for keeping troops in Iraq indefinitely. And these three exceptions include training the Iraqi forces, protecting the U.S. Embassy, and some limited counter-terrorism uh, mission. Now, these three exceptions will leave, according to the Pentagon's own uh, estimates, between 40 and 75,000 troops in Iraq indefinitely. Now, this is not a withdrawal. Why it's not a withdrawal? Because Iraqis will not meet one morning and say, now that we have half an occupation, let's have half resistance and half violence. It doesn't work that way, right? Uh, the U.S. Embassy in Iraq, if it was really a U.S. Embassy that is built for, you know, continuing uh, the building relationships and, and diplomacy with Iraq, that would be excellent. I am the first one who will support it. I will go build the embassy with them. But just to give you an example of how that embassy is not really an embassy, it's a permanent base for political intervention. They want to run the country for Iraqis, they run their business for them, you know? Just to give you an example. The American Friends Service Committee, my organization, is inviting five Iraqi parliamentarians. In fact, the invitation, the official invitation came from the uh, Congress, from one of the congressional uh, committees. And uh, my organization is actually covering the expenses of the five parliamentarians to come to the US. So, one of the parliamentarians calls me a few weeks ago from Baghdad. He says, I'm standing in front of the consulate and I have my uh, Green Zone pass, because he works in the Green Zone. I have my Iraqi diplomatic passport and I have the congressional invitation with me. And I have my parliament ID and the visa application. He wants to drop the visa application inside the consulate. And they're telling me that I can't go inside the building because Iraqis are barred from the US embassy and consulate. So even if any Iraqi wants to go inside the embassy or consulate, they should go with, uh, they, should, they told him you should get an American to escort you. So I told him this will give some, uh, Good new ideas for an escort business <laughs> in Baghdad this time. Uh, they don't let Iraqi parliamentarians or officials, elected officials, to go inside the consulate, not to give a presentation about the future of the country. No, they don't let them go inside to drop the application. So, I mean, imagine what type of embassies we are talking about. It's an embassy that is not meant to build diplomatic relationships. And the other excuse or the other intervention is training Iraqi forces. Now, all of the you know, presidential candidates speak about training Iraqi forces as if this 
good thing. You know, like we should feel proud of it or something. But Iraqis don't, don't think it's a good thing. It, the way that Iraqis view training the, the Iraqi armed forces is very similar to the way that Latin Americans view the school of the Americas. <laughs> training assassins and mercenaries who go back home and kill their own people. Many people, including myself, don't think that the millions of Iraqis who were displaced internally happened by coincidence when, when the five separatist parties went back to Iraq in 2003, they said, we want to create our Sunnistan and Shiastan. So people like myself, naive people like myself, said, are you crazy? There are two million Sunnis in, in the south and two million Shiites in the middle. How are you going to have a Sunnistan and a Shiastan? So they corrected that mistake in the last four years when two million Shiites were kicked from the middle and two million Sunnis were kicked from the south. That wasn't because of random violence. So these people who are kicking the Sunnis and Shiites and killing them are trained and supported and protected by the US forces in Iraq. Why would the Iraqis like this? Why would the Iraqis say, yes, please train our sectarian forces to kill us more? It's not good. So, and the last point that is usually given is the counter-terrorism point. And I mean, in 2003, when people used to ask me that question, I used to say, Al-Qaeda never existed in Iraq before. Iraqis ruled their country, and neither Al-Qaeda, nor Iran, nor Saudi Arabia, nor anyone interfered. And I don't think that the US will succeed in protecting Iraq's border the same way that Iraq is doing. Now in 2008, it's not a theory anymore. The US has tried and failed miserably in protecting Iraq's borders. Iraq has never been that much penetrated. Al-Qaeda comes in and out, Iran, I don't know whom. Like, there is no sovereignty, no independence. So the best way for counter-terrorism uh, you know, operations is to leave Iraq alone. Let Iraqis fight against intervention, whether it's terrorism or Iran or Al-Qaeda or whomever. Let Iraqis do that. So uh, I, that was a very long answer to your question. But I think the short answer is that only, only a U.S. withdrawal that ends all types of intervention, all of types of uh, political, economic, diplomatic, all of these interventions, only that type of withdrawal will make Iraq a better place. But if you wanted to pull out the troops and send more mercenaries, if you wanted to pull out the troops and mercenaries and support some more Iraqi puppets against their own people, if you wanted to market our intervention in different ways, Iraq will continue to deteriorate and violence will continue to increase.